Hey everybody, if you're one of the many people who's recently written to me and asked me to do a reaction to top 10 goth icons from watchmojo.com, you're about to get your wish. There seems to be a lot of these kind of like goth things in the media lately. Why? Why is that? I'm not sure what I expect from this video, but everyone said I have to see it. I can't predict what like the mainstream media might choose as 10 goth icons. I guess the fact that Elvira is in the thumbnail gives away one of the 10, but who might I expect to see in this list? I guess it's kind of hard because there are so many different branches you could go into if we're talking about TV and film or music or culture, or literature, blah. There's got to be at least either Robert Smith or Susie Sue, maybe Peter Murphy. I would put them there. Movies and TV, um, obviously Elvira or Vampira. There's gotta be like Morticia Adams, surely. Maybe like Bela Lugosi or Vincent Price or Tim Burton. Maybe Bram Stoker, the author of Dracula, or maybe just like the character of Dracula. God, I don't know. Maybe someone a bit more modern like Razor Candy. I don't know. I would say that this list should be mostly musicians. I don't know, someone told me that the list was a bit cringe that they've put together, so I guess we'll find out together right now. All right, watch Mojo, impress me. <laughs> impress me, internet. It's time for you to break out the blood and black lace. Hello. <laughs> oh, of course. Welcome to watchmojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 goth icons. And close to Satan, and it's clear to see that he don't mind the raging fire. Voltaire. This list we're ranking Susie. people and artists that most closely resonate with the gothic scenes of Marilyn music, Manson, oh, culture, of course. and cinema. Tim Burton. We're excluding fictional Lydia icons Dates. such as Lydia Dietz from Tim Burton's Beetlejuice, okay. however, as those characters deserve their own list. So that oh, means fair enough, real they're people only. All right, real people only. My whole life is a dark room. One. Number ten. Eight, Peter dark. Murphy. Yes. Good. <laughs> Good. I really didn't Lots think they would include him. Rock icons have captured the emotions and imaginations of music fans across the globe. He is the godfather of course. Peter Murphy and Bauhaus might have had the most Oh, that's such a good start. That's such a good start. I really Indeed, Murphy's rich baritone vocals and striking physical appearance have resonated with those fans cheekbones and though. Artists worldwide. I just thought that he wouldn't be like quite mainstream enough to appear in this list. I'm impressed. We're off to a good start. And Blair, the godfather of goth, has influenced fans from both the gothic rock Pete genre Steel. and beyond. I like this so far. Good music. The world of goth may have its fair share of iconic frontmen and performers, but there's only one Peter Murphy. I've seen him perform twice and I got to hold his hand. Whoa. Number nine, Bella Lugosi. Ah, another accurate prediction. For me, it's a test for you. Oh, All hail this great. blood sucking, trance inducing, soul seducing yes. goth icon. A most distinguished scientist whose name <laughs> we know, even in the wild. Oh, he's so great. So great. Portrayal of Bram Stoker's Dracula. Count Dracula that cemented his legacy as Such the founding father of great perfect Dracula. I am Dracula. It's difficult even now for many horror fans to describe okay. any old school vampire. Two down, eight to go. So far, really impressed. <laughs> Number eight, Alistair Crowley. Oh, this evil horror magician and occultist earned a cool choice. The most wicked man in the world. Alistair Crowley was famed for pursuing occult study during the late 1800s into the early 20th century. Interesting choice. And established a lot of people do known as the really Lord. look up to him. Crowley also joined the ranks of other magic circles, including the Ordo Templi Orientis. I think I have a tarot deck designed by him. Number seven, Cassandra Peterson, Elvira. also known as Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. Also known as possibly my real mother. That one fast ten times. Cassandra Peterson serves as the brain and the, the thumbnail was a bit of a giveaway. I never went out for sports. I went out with a few sports, but that's another story for another time. Oh, she's so Peterson great. I'd love to meet her in real life. They would be so awesome. Here on the walk. Who's the most drop dead gorgeous one of all? Poor Elvira. <laughs> Peterson mixed a wise cracking valley girl attitude with sexy gothic chic. A combination that was tailor made Stick. for her cult. I don't know, I'm pretty sure that millions of people love Elvira, so I guess she's a pretty good choice. Go for any old bloke with a sports car. After that, a 
Elvira's bah. status as a gothic and her icon was quickly cemented and even led to a feature How did she do it? Her own in 1998. Sooner I get in the saddle. How does she mix that kind of like sexiness and silliness with like so little effort? Number six. Yes. Good. Another accurate prediction. This is really good so far. Elvira might have brought gothic beauty to the mainstream, but it was this gothic rock legend that started the fire. I love this song. Susie Sue fronted Susie and the Banshees starting in the mid 70s, drawing She is extremely influential. She influenced so much music and so much fashion and style. She really. Whether she was She's a, if, if Peter Murphy is the godfather, she is the godmother. Someone else I would fucking love to meet in real life. It would just be beyond amazing. Number five, Edgar. Oh, yes. I was reading some Poe yesterday, actually. Not massively cliche at all. As some of the most important slices of gothic horror fiction put to paper. And of course, we can't forget to mention the it's Raven. Surprise. What were you? Never mind. Come on. Oh, Let's go. Romantic. That film was actually a bit silly. Yeah, I think if Edgar Allan Poe were around now, he would he would have been a goth. The themes and ideas behind his work oh, look at him. continue to inspire artists from music, literature, and film. I can't believe he died at like 40. <laughs> Shadow that lies floating on the floor. Bloody earth that will. Shall be lifted. Never more. Number four, Alice Cooper. Alice Cooper? Yeah, why not? He did sort of start a kind of shock rock thing much in a way. Was a big cornerstone of the whole shock rock. Here we go. I like this list so far. Where's the cringe part? Some of the choices are a bit cringe, someone said. Um, so far, so good. I can't wait to see what the other ones are. What do we have left on the list? Stage shows that incorporated bloody visceral theatrics, including hangings, a guillotine, and even a giant Frankenstein's monster. Just awesome. commitment to scaring and shocking us. It's earned Alice Cooper an unchallenged icon status. Fair enough. Well deserved. Well earned. Here's... He is a total icon. Number three, Marilyn Manson. Yeah, he kind of... He's the shock rocker that came afterwards, right? There are a few rock musicians out there that can be the visual focal point of attention, no matter where they are. But Marilyn Manson is one of those few. I think Marilyn Manson's one of those people that so many people love, but are afraid to admit it. Because he's so mainstream, I think people are afraid to admit that they like Marilyn Manson's music. Oh no, my, my music taste's really obscure. I, I only listen to like bands you've never heard of. His extremely intelligent personality and unique lyrics set him apart from the metal pack, however, and True. made Marilyn Manson his lyrics are very intelligent. All its own. So many people have tried to copy him. So many other artists have tried to copy him and are still doing so. I won't say who I think, but you know. Number two. Tim Burton. I was feeling very crazy, or Fantastic. very floaty, or whatever. And when yes. I started wearing striped socks, I just felt can't move for Tim Burton fans and our spooky subculture. If one were to distill classic goth extravagance into he is a hero from my childhood. It's very likely that director Tim Burton might be at the top of a very short list of options. It is so easy to commit embarrassing blunders. <sighs> But Eddie could tell us it's just what is expected. Beetlejuice, it was my fave, like, it was either my favorite film or one of my top favorite films when I was a child. He carved a career out of imagining incredibly detailed worlds and characters and bringing them to life, while at the same time oh, yeah. endearing himself to me. Oh, Sweeney Todd. Oh, one of the most beautiful films I have ever seen. We unveil our top goth icon. Here are a few morbidly honorable mentions. Honorable mentions. Amy Lee. No. Rob Zombie. Oh yeah. I'm a fan.
Frank Reznor. Okay. Popular guy, but I wouldn't call him a goth icon. Good! Good! I did not expect Robert Smith, Susie Sue, and Peter Murphy. Those are the three people I said at the beginning, and I really seriously doubted that we would see any of them. Maybe one, all three. I'm glad that Robert Smith's number one, actually. <laughs> No, so good. Meanwhile, Smith's commercial appeal as uh, an incredibly oh, this is such a beautiful music video, Lullaby. It's beautiful. I understand that Tim Burton was inspired by The Cure and Robert Smith. You can kind of see pictures of you, which have made this uh, goth icon. Do you agree with our list? Yeah. Which goth icons deserve to be recognized for their contributions? It will have a lot of things in it. All of the above? Yeah. Pretty much. I would still use it on a completely personal project. For more fabulous top tens published every day, be sure to- I'm not sure what the fuss was about. They were saying that this list was full of cringe and that some of their decisions were a bit questionable. I I guess like the honourable mentions, a couple of those, I'm a bit- I think that's a bit weird. Like Amy Lee and Trent Reznor. Yeah. Them, for example, they're both really popular, but I wouldn't call them icons. They gave Ian Curtis an honourable mention, and I think he de definitely deserves an honourable mention a lot more than Trent Reznor or Amy Lee. I think that list was great. I really do. At the beginning, I'd hoped that we would see at least one of Robert Smith, Susie Sue, or Peter Murphy, and we saw all three. I'd hoped for Bela Lugosi, Tim Burton, or Vincent Price and Bella Lugosi and Tim Burton were in there and we saw Vincent Price pop up a couple of times. I think that was a really good video. I think it, I think it was. I think they've done some research and they've made some good decisions. I think that they've done their homework and they've put together quite a good list of people who are actually icons and have been influential with a subculture. People who have been very influential with music and film style and aesthetics. People who have inspired others who have become popular. I thought it was good. I thought that was really good. What do you think? Do you think there was anyone on that list that shouldn't have been there? Is there anyone that you think should have been on that list? Tell us in the comments if you thought there was anyone that Watch Mojo has missed. I also really like that there was a little bit of Voltaire footage at the beginning because he's someone I have much respect and admiration for. If you have not already done so, please subscribe to my channel and make at least two videos every week. And thank you for watching. As always, take care of yourselves, be nice to each other, and I will see you next time. Bye!